Hey dudes, I'm back. Uh, because of time, I'm gonna go by pretty quickly here. Um, but try to keep up with me, okay? Uh, so this question 13 is talking about a, a line that passes through the two point uh, two five and seven three. Well, the equation of the line, if you guys remember, is y equals m x plus b. <clears throat> what we need to find here is the slope, which is m, and we need to find b, which is the uh, y-intercept. Okay, first let's find the slope. Well, slope is m. That's equal to change in y over change in x. Okay, and that could be represented by y1 minus y2 x1 minus x2. Well, what is y1? What is y2? Well, now we're referring to the coordinates here. If we look back up here, x1 is going to be that first number 2, and y1 is going to be that uh, sec uh, first set of numbers, the second integer, right? And x2 is 7, y2 is 3. So I'm going to plug these in. y1 is 5, so we get get that from up top, minus y2, which is 3, x1 is 2, minus x2, which is 7, and we have a negative 2 over uh, negative 5. <coughs> One correction, this is a positive 2. Man, okay, here we go. So slope is, uh, you know, positive 2 over negative 5 or just slope is equal to negative 2 over 5 okay same deal same thing here next we want to do is plug the slope into the equation y equals instead of mx plus b we want to put in negative 2 over 5 because now we know that's a slope okay finally part of the last step is to plug in a number for y plug in a number for x so we can solve for b what do we get the number? Well, we just use one of the points that it passes through. So you look at the top here, either 2, 5, or 7, 3. All right, we're going to plug these in. Okay, let's pick one. It doesn't matter which one. Let's plug in the first one, 2, comma, 5. Okay? Well, we're going to plug in 2 for x. So it'll be negative 2 over 5 times 2 plus b. And the other side, y is going to be 5. Okay? Here we go. So let's solve this out. Here we go. So 5 is equal to it's negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 over 5 plus b. Okay. Now we need to get b by itself. So I'm going to move this to the other side. So instead of out of inverse, I'm going to add 4 fifths on this side and add 4 fifths on this side. Oh, wait, I'm doing too much work. The question just asked for what is the slope of the line. So the slope is m equals a negative 2 fifth. We're done over there. I don't need to do all these steps over here. Sorry about that. That's just extra work. All right, if we go on with the work, we'll find the equation of a line, which is to find b also. Okay, a lot more work um, than I need to do. The slope is just negative 2 fifth. And that's the answer over here, negative 2 over 5. Okay, next question. Let's keep it going. You want to stay awake with me? Here you go. Question number 14. What are the roots of the equation? Okay, this equation over here is a quadratic equation. So what do we need to do? We need to factor it. Okay, and you'll know that the factors eventually, if you do the, if you look at my other videos, the factors here is going to be uh, x minus 7 and x minus 3. This is equal to zero. Now. We want to find the roots. The roots are solutions. What is x that makes it equal to 0? Right, so we need a 0 either on the left side. x minus 7 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Um, let's solve for it. Add 7 on both sides. You get x equals positive 7. That is one solution or one root. You add 3 on the other side and you get x equals 3. Okay. That is the other um, root. Okay, look at the choices. Choice three, there you go. You got it. Let's move on. Question 14. Anytime I'm going too fast, just rewind and watch it again and click on the slow motion button. Okay. All right, number 15. Let me read this question first. Rhonda has 135 in nickels. 
and dimes in her pocket. If she has six more dimes and nickels, which equation can be used to determine x, the number of nickels she has? <clears throat> okay, so let's put uh, nickels. Well, how many nickels she has? Uh, let's just get use x and dimes. Right, she has six more dimes and nickels, so it would be number of dimes plus six. Okay, now what is the value of a nickel? Nickel is point it's five cents, right? Or point zero five a dollar. This times the number of nickels, x, right? Plus what is the value of a dime? That is point ten, ten cents, times the number of dimes, which is x plus six, is gonna give you the total of a dollar and thirty-five cents. Okay, now let's see which equation is the same as this. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Okay. It's going to be choice two. That's right. Choice two. Here we go. All right. Next. Let's keep on moving. Stay with me. 16. Okay. Remember the axis symmetry is the line that cuts this. Uh, parabola in half or uh, make them into mirror images. In this case, it would be a, la a line down, it would be a vertical line. This is a parabola that's facing up, okay? And this blue line that I drew, right, will split the parabola in half or, or make a mirror image of each other, okay? So let's find out what this uh, line is. Well, it's a vertical line, so we know it's going to be x equals something, right? And let's uh, count the spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Right, and this is uh, negative three. Okay, make sure. Sometimes you want to look into the units here, because if that's not negative five, if they're not, if they're not in units of one, it won't be negative three. But something else, just be careful of that. So it's x equals negative three. That is choice two. <coughs> okay, keep on going. You guys on a row. Okay, seventeen. Seventeen. Let's. Uh, yeah, you know, just look at numbers here. One, two, three, four. Right? Which set of numbers is equivalent to that? Right. So could it be one? Well, it can't be one because this says x is greater than one. Right? It says x is greater than one, but it include the number set here includes one, so it can't be one. Cross that out. Uh, number two, x is greater than zero. Well, what is x? X is one, two, three, four. Is it greater than zero? Yes, it is. But is it less than 4? No, it's not because it includes 4 here. So it can't be less than 4. Cross this out. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, number 3. X is greater than 0. Yes, that's true. 1, 2, 3, 4 is greater than 0. And X is less than or equal to 4. Okay, yes, that's true. 1, 2, 3, 4 is less than or equal to 4. So choice 3 is your correct answer. Okay, correct answer. Right, don't even bother looking at choice 4. Kidding, kidding. Go we'll check all your answers. Next, 18. Uh, what is the value of x in the equation over here? Well, this is algebra. And just solve it out. Solve for x. 2 of x minus 3 equals 26 over x. Okay, first thing you want to do, let's uh, let's get this 3. Let's change this with an x on uh, top. Uh, 3 is the same as 3 over 1. Let's get a common denominator, x here. So what I need to do, well, I need to get an x on the bottom here. So I'll multiply this by x. And if I multiply the bottom by x, I need to multiply the top by x, right? Because I need a common denominator. So this will become right, 3x over x, 2 over x equals 26 over x. OK, you know what? This way. Is actually the longer way. Okay, it still works. If I finish it out, it's going to be a longer, uh, comp, you know, longer mathematical work. There's an easier way. Let me just erase this. Okay, my way still works, but it's going to be longer. So I'm going to erase this and show you the easier way. If my eraser works. Okay, what you could do is actually is uh, write this again. You can subtract. You can move this two x to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2 over x, subtract 2 over x, and what you get is negative 3 equals 26x minus 
2 over x. Okay. Now, what does this become? This become uh, negative 3 equals uh, 26 minus 2, 24 over x, since I have the same denominator. Okay, now we're going to solve for x. Okay. Uh, what we can do here is multiply both sides by x so I can get rid so I can move the x to the other side. This will cancel and you'll have negative 3x equals 24. Okay, let's finish it up. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, get x equals negative 8. And that is the answer over here, choice one.